The actual true canon ending of Cyberpunk 2077 is not the happy one. I know, I know, but Fall, V gets to live and he has friends in Pan Am and, and I know, I know, I want to believe it too, but it's not real. It's a lie, guys, a pleasant fantasy. But that isn't how this story ends, and I'm going to tell you why. There's a universal grimness to the endings in Cyberpunk's universe. For Cyberpunk 2077, there is the sobering reality that V will not get out unscathed. At best, V gets an indeterminate amount of time before his body fully rejects him. At worst, he never emerges after the final mission at all and gives up his body, becoming one with Alt to join the sentient AI she has become, living on in cyberspace if such a fate can even be called living at all. Despite this, there is something of a happy-ish ending, or at least a best-case scenario. Doomed to his inevitable end, V returns to his body, determined to live out his remaining days the best he can. He's still affected by the program that has enacted sweeping changes to his physiology, his body now rejecting his consciousness as an outsider since it has rewritten everything down to his very DNA to house Johnny's engram. After returning to his body, V makes the most of what time is left to him, leaving Night City with Pan Am and the Atacaldos. He and his new nomad family relocate to Arizona in pursuit of fortune and favor, and maybe a way to prolong V's life as much as possible. We never see exactly how this pans out, but we don't need to. V is with his friends and family, loved and accepted with Pan Am by his side. Night City and all its promise and disappointment, wealth and ruin are left behind. And V has his best chance here now with these people for happiness, purpose, and fulfillment in his remaining days. This ending is a satisfying one, and I understand why many people prefer it as the canon ending. Here we see the deepest impact of V's choices throughout the game. It's the ending that offers hope of a good life for V, however short or long that may be. I like this ending, but I know that it is not the true ending for Cyberpunk 2077. Despite the pretty picture that it paints, I know deep down that this isn't how V or Johnny Silverhand's story ends. Because of course... Wrong city. Wrong people. If there is one thing that Cyberpunk has been consistent about is that there is no happy ending without a price. The true ending of Cyberpunk 2077 is Johnny's route. At the end of the game, after suffering through so many ordeals together, getting to know each other, and building up trust, not to mention being literally in each other's heads, V and Johnny have become close, forged an unexpected bond of friendship. Johnny, for all his hard-edged rocker boy past, has become as changed by V as V has become changed by him and grown to value V. In his own way, he feels responsible for V's predicament, though he didn't choose any of this any more than V himself did. In the end, as V weakens and fades, Johnny offers to take over, possessing V's body and taking the fight to Arasaka in a last desperate bid to access Mikoshi, where there is at least some hope that V and Johnny's consciousness can be separated in time to save V's life. Johnny recruits Rogan Alt in a recklessly dangerous plan to assault Arasaka Tower and access Mikoshi's mainframe buried deep beneath the tower. Letting Alt into the system to wreak havoc, free the other trapped consciousnesses in Mikoshi, and separate V and Johnny once and for all. At the end of the wild ride, Rogue falls to Adam Smasher's robotic hand, with Johnny avenging her and putting an end to the cyborg juggernaut's legend for good before jacking into Mikoshi and plunging into cyberspace. The scenario that unfolds is the same as in every variant of the ending. Despite all their efforts, V's body is rejecting him, already too far gone by the program housing Johnny's engram, the body expecting Johnny to take over with V being expelled. While Alt can separate Johnny and V's consciousness, she is powerless where the body is concerned. The process is irreversible. V can return to his body with a few months left to live, or Johnny can take the body that has been primed for him, the body that will accept him and allow him to live on. Johnny rails against this, seeing it as a betrayal of V, a betrayal he can't abide. But V is resolute, his mind made up in helping Johnny the only way he possibly can. Got nothing to go back to, Johnny. Not so for you. Turning your back on the problem again? But little guilt creeps in and that's that. You give up? Stop. Just stop. Gonna just roll over instead of fighting for what's yours? Decommiss yourself because you're too fucking scared to say goodbye? It's my decision. Let me make it. You're loyal, I'll grant you that. But damn it, are you intense. 
Haven't changed a bit since we met. V, I'm just... I'm just scared for you. I'll see you around, Johnny. We wake as Johnny living some months later in V's flesh. Like V did in the Out of Kaldos ending, Johnny has decided to leave Night City and all it has done to him behind. Johnny still lives with the ghost of V even though his friend has already moved on into the net. It's impossible not to really. He sees V every time he looks in the mirror. Every moment in this new body is a memory of his friend and what both of them have lost. Even months later, Johnny still catches himself talking to V as if they shared a consciousness still. As Johnny goes about Night City wrapping up his final business, it's evident how much his experiences have changed him. Gone is the silver hand of old, brash, aggressive, full of righteous fury and indignation, and a fire desperate to burn away all the injustices of a city and a system that thrives off greed and corruption. Instead, Johnny seems able to access some appreciation for his new life, commenting that there's a sort of beauty to Night City that he always took for granted in the past. In this, we see a glimmer of hope for Johnny, that he may find some purpose in life, that he holds value for what was sacrificed for him and intends to make it worth something. Before leaving Night City, Johnny says his final goodbyes. To Rogue, who could deny Johnny nothing. Rogue, can't believe it turned out this way. You'd still be queen of the afterlife if not for me. Although, I'm sure you'd say we finally got him good, huh? Yeah, we fucking got him. I shouldn't have dragged you into this. I'm sorry. to be tossed into a shared life with the lingering ghost of an old rocker boy legend. Oh, V. Can't carry this around anymore, you know? Can't keep wallowing. Can't keep obsessing over what happened. Couldn't forget you anyway. I'm wearing your goddamn face. Thanks for... Huh. Well, for everything. I'm wiser now. And I don't plan to waste it. So this is goodbye. Johnny Silverhand leaves Night City behind, but we know implicitly he cannot leave the weight of what he's been through behind. There's a bittersweet, melancholic beauty to this ending. The weight of it feels right, it feels appropriate, like there could never be any other way for this story to end. Wrong city, wrong people. Cyberpunk 2077 offers a happy ending, or at least a happier one. But this is the only ending that makes sense to me. Night City always takes its price. There are no exceptions, 
nobody is special. Like all legends of Night City, as long as there are young street kids out there looking up to the legends that came before them, V's story will never be forgotten. And as long as Johnny Silverhand lives, his friend's legacy will never fade away.